It is unfortunate that the folks at the Electric Universe have adopted the mainstream habit of censoring critics of their theories. I think it takes away from their message and deprives its members of the chance to hear counter-arguments and to engage in meaningful debates. But it doesn't come as a complete surprise why the electricians resorted to censorship when you listen to their theories. The Electric Universe proposes mechanisms for the workings of the solar system that, frankly, stretch anyone's imagination. Science is about explaining a theory rationally. In order to explain rationally, the presenter must first get his language straight. If the prosecutor talks about trees and the juror thinks rocks, they are clearly not communicating. Every word in a dictionary belongs in one of two categories. The term either alludes to an object or to a concept. The word in question either represents that which has shape or that which doesn't. Physics is done with objects, specifically with objects that exist. We cannot do physics with concepts. The quantum mechanics and the electric universe electricians have yet to learn this fundamental rule. They attempt to do their lab experiments and field work with abstract concepts. The mechanics and electricians reify concepts and then pretend to be moving the resulting objects. For instance, where should we list the three words that make or break the theories of the electric universe? Ether, vortex, and plasma. Are they objects or concepts? Ether. Many anti-establishment folks propose ether as an object. They visualize it as an exotic type of medium. Some see ether as a substance that fills space. Others equate it with space and think of the two terms as synonyms. What these folks never realize is that they propose the same thing as the establishment they strongly criticize. The ether of the anti-establishment is no different than the space-time proposed by general relativity. The word ether has extremely negative connotations in theoretical physics because of its past association with opposition to relativity. This is unfortunate because stripped of these connotations, it rather nicely captures the way most physicists actually think about the vacuum. The modern concept of the vacuum of space, confirmed every day by experiment, is a relativistic ether, but we do not call it this because it is taboo. As Einstein himself said, according to the general theory of relativity, space without ether is unthinkable. In physics, there is a single test for an object, and that is to illustrate it. All objects are, without exception, two-dimensional or three-dimensional. Anything below or above this is automatically a concept. A theorist should have no excuse for drawing an object that plays a central role in his theory. In order to draw the ether, the proponent has to visualize it for the jurors from a bird's eye perspective. The juror must be able to see what the prosecutor of a theory is referring to as if he were standing next to God. Where does the ether begin? Where does it end? What will the proponents of ether draw as a contouring medium that gives shape to the ether? Are space and ether synonyms? Or is space the cosmic ocean, a box or a balloon that contains a substance called ether? People with little ability to reason answer that, we will never know, or we have no way of knowing. This is not an issue that requires knowledge. It is strictly a conceptual issue. It is simply irrational for a scientist to continue to say that ether is contained within space which is contained within space-time, which is contained within the 26th dimension, which is contained within something that we can't even imagine. Of course, you will not find pictures of the ether in the Wikipedia. And if you Google the word ether, these are some of the images that pop up.
Not one of these proposals looks like the other. So, which of these objects does the infamous ether refer to? Does ether look like a bottle of ink that has been turned upside down? A cloud of smoke that stands behind Einstein? A purple ball? Will the real ether please stand up? Therefore, if the proponent proclaims that the ether is an object, the onus is on him to illustrate what he is talking about and label the medium or entity that provides contrast. He is welcome to sculpt a mock-up or to bring a statue if he wishes. If he cannot imagine his own hypothesis, the juror can't help him. Vortex Vortex is another buzzword in the mouth of many electricians. A vortex can be likened to a tornado, a whirlwind of sorts. Without motion, a tornado is just an ice cream cone. A cone is to a photograph what a tornado is to a movie. The electricians invoke the word vortex to refer to a movie of a twirling wind of sorts. Yet they illustrate the vortex in a single image, as if they took a snapshot of a tornado. So what are we staring at? Whipped chocolate? Cotton candy? Scour mesh? Swirling water? An object requires no more than a single image, a photograph. A tornado, on the other hand, is a movie. It requires many frames. The electric folk invoke the word vortex to refer to something that is already in motion. The onus shifts to them to tell the audience what it is that is moving. What are these flakes or serpentines that we are watching in motion? The electricians have the burden of illustrating in a single image the underlying entity that swirls during the movie called Vortex. Plasma Plasma is in the same boat as Vortex. The onus shifts to the proponent of plasma to draw a static, standalone picture of this object. Of course, it's not an easy feat to condense a movie into a single frozen image. Plasma simply means charged or ionized gas. Plasma means that something has happened or is happening to a gas. Again, a dynamic concept. The quantum mathematicians propose that an atom consists of electron beads which orbit the nucleus. And of course, they later repudiate this planetary model. Yet they invoke it to explain ionization. The establishment explains ionization as the removal of electron beads from their respective atoms, here marked in blue, leaving them positively charged. The qualifiers charged and ionized refer to an action that the atom has experienced or is experiencing. Nevertheless, the folks at the Electric Universe invoke Bohr's planetary model of the atom to explain plasma. The electricians propose that an atom consists of an electron bead that orbits the proton bowling ball. They explain ionization as the loss of this bead to another atom and electricity, the bread and butter of the electric universe, as the flow of these beads from one atom to the next. And this takes us to the crux of the matter. On their Facebook website, the electric universe folk assert that there are no isolated islands in an electric universe. This is quite amusing since the bread and butter of the electric universe is no different than the nonsense that quantum mechanics proposes, the discrete particle, an isolated, disconnected entity. Electric universe theorists talk about electric currents and magnetic fields and plasma discharges and do it all with Bohr's debunked, discrete, quantum planetary model of the atom. The electric folk pretend to weave a continuous web across the galaxies of what they call plasma filaments with discrete ping-pong balls. The electricians propose an electric universe, but they can't conceptualize for you what electricity is. 
They also talk about solar magnetic field lines, magnetospheres, and magnetism. What is magnetism? What physical object underlies magnetism and produces attraction between two magnets? It is axiomatic that we can only do physics with objects, specifically with objects that exist. Anyone claiming the existence of something, whether knowingly or unwittingly, has crossed the line into physics. Physics is the science of existence. In conclusion, the fatal shortcomings of the foundations of the electric universe include that the electric folk purport to do physics with things that don't exist. They reify concepts and then go through the motions of moving them around. The electricians have converted words such as vortex and plasma into physical objects when both are clearly dynamic concepts. The electricians have also borrowed irrational terminology created by the establishment, waves, fields, energy, and charge. They have never defined or explained phenomena known as electricity and magnetism, yet they use these terms as if they knew what they were talking about. The members of the electric universe also invoke Bohr's planetary model of the atom to make their case. And like quantum, the electric universe folks are heavily dependent on particles, specifically when attempting to explain fields and to describe plasma. The electric universe theorists need to tell the audience what physical object is moving during the movie known as Vortex. And the electric universe theorists need to tell the audience what physical object is moving during the movie known as Plasma. What would we see in a single frame of either film? I hate to break it to this misguided group of people, but Vortex and Plasma are not physical objects for the purposes of physics. Anyone still invoking words such as Vortex and Plasma in the 21st century hasn't learned the first thing about the scientific method. Whenever a theorist reifies a concept, he is not doing science, he is doing religion. Thank mm -hmm. you.